I'm back in Melbourne. Instead of being 35 degrees, it's about 15. Typical Melbourne summer's night. Time for some economics. Our topic is still externalities and we're looking at whether the government can fix a market failure caused by an externality. And today we're going to be looking at the case of a negative externality. Last reminder, an externality exists if one person's actions affect another person's welfare, but there is no compensation. You probably can recite that definition now in your sleep. Last time we looked at the case of a positive externality and how the government could subsidise the product, in that case deodorant, to eliminate the deadweight loss associated with a perfectly competitive market. Now we'll turn our attention to a negative externality, pollution caused by the generation and consumption of electricity. How does the government fix that problem? Let's look again at our electricity market. We have the downward sloping demand curve for electricity. And because the externality associated with electricity will be in the production of electricity, the demand curve is also going to be the marginal private value curve and the marginal social value curve. We're putting the externality on the production side, not the consumption side. So we have our upward sloping supply curve for electricity. And that's going to be equal to our marginal private cost. But it's not going to be equal to our marginal social cost. The marginal social cost will take into account the negative externality, the extra cost to society associated with the pollution caused by the electricity production. That negative externality is measured by the gap between the supply curve and the upward sloping marginal social cost curve. That gap tells us, for any particular unit, what is the marginal external pollution cost associated with producing that unit of electricity. Now the market quantity will be where our demand curve and our supply curve intersect. That will give us the perfectly competitive market quantity Q market down here. But that's inefficient. It's associated with too much production. How do we know that? Because the socially efficient quantity is where the marginal social cost is equal to the marginal social value. And that's this point here at a quantity of Q star. So we get excessive production in the market. Excessive production leads to a dead weight loss. And we want to think of a government policy to solve that problem. Now, we could have the government simply set output quotas on electricity. It could simply tell electricity generators that they cannot produce more than Q star units of electricity. But is there a better solution? Let's go back again to Arthur Pigou. Arthur Pigou told us that when there's a positive externality, the government can eliminate the dead weight loss by encouraging production in the marketplace. It can do that by subsidising the product. But the problem here is a negative externality. We have too much production in the marketplace. How can the government get the market to reduce the amount it produces? Easy. Tax a relevant product. We can put a Pagovian tax on electricity so that we reduce the amount that is traded in the marketplace and bring the quantity back to the socially optimal level. If we do that, we'll remember that a tax is going to put a wedge between demand and supply. We want demand and supply separated so we get exactly Q star. What's our optimal tax wedge going to be? Well, we can read it straight off this diagram. We want the price to the buyers to be up here. We want the price to the sellers to be down here on the supply curve. That means that our optimal tax is going to be exactly equal to that distance there. If the government puts on this level of tax, our Pagovian tax, then the market will choose to consume Q star units of electricity. And what's the size? of that optimal tax, we'll notice that it is simply the gap between the marginal social cost and the marginal private cost at 
the socially optimal level. In other words, it's equal to the marginal external cost of pollution, the negative externality on the marginal unit at the socially optimal quantity. So if a government can solve the problem of the excessive pollution of the negative externality by going out and measuring the marginal social cost of pollution, working out the optimal tax and putting it in place. This might all sound good in theory, but do we see it in practice? Yes. The debate about a carbon tax, a tax on producers who emit carbon dioxide and other gases that contribute to global warming, a classic negative externality, that debate is all about finding the correct Pigouvian tax. Finding out what is the marginal social cost from the emission of carbon dioxide and equivalent gases and taxing the polluters to internalise the externality so that the market itself solves the problem of global warming. The debate is about the size of the problem and the size of the tax. But pretty much everyone agrees that some form of carbon tax is the way to go to solve global warming. So just to summarise, the optimal tax for a negative externality equals the marginal external cost at the socially optimal quantity. If that tax is put in place, the market itself will choose to produce and consume the socially optimal level of output. That's the Pigouvian tax, and that is a government response to solve the market failure of negative externalities such as pollution. Talk to you next time.